Okay, morning, brothers and sisters. Um, this is just a little add-on because, you know, I read a particular um, version of wisdom in the Apocrypha, and I really should have used, um, you know, sections of this one, and I didn't do a very good job. I apologize. Um, but let's do this, and I had promised I would throw in a little bit of information on the cathars and how it's lining up with what I believe. And you're only going to line up with certain beliefs in the past. Once you in, in it, you're, it's going to tell on itself what they did believe, um, because it comes out of the same information that you can kind of gather on them yourself. So, anyway, we'll get to it. I'm sorry. Uh, verse twenty nine. We're going to read in verse no twenty. We're going to start in verse twenty of chapter fourteen of wisdom, and we're just going to read to twenty seven, and. What I, per, in my personal understandings of this world, um, I find that there is such an unwillingness, and I, I have to pin it on wickedness, this idea of unwillingness to believe that you got it wrong. And it really is, is stemming from wickedness. And so here we are. If, if we had got it right, we would not be on the precipi you know, precipitous of another war. I don't think I say that word. Um, you know, I wonder what did the saints think of World War One? Did they think, oh, 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 we're heading home? Did the saints of World War Two think, oh, oh, we're heading home? Here we are on the cusp of, cusp of a possible third world war, and this is all the saints and so-called holy ones can think. Get me off planet Earth. They don't take time to examine what it is that has brought us to the fact that the wickedness in man's kind in his lack of control, <laughs> his anger, his hate is bringing on so much bloodshed for the people of this world and all those saints, holy ones can supposedly say is get me off planet earth. They don't realize that if you were truly righteous and had the truth that this truth that you think that you got should have never taken us to the points that it has taken us to. And this, these passages attest to that fact. So we're going to begin reading in chapter 14, and we're just going to take verses 20 to 27. And I, I think it's a much better rendering, and I should have done it in my first study, and I didn't. Um, so verse 20, and so the multitude allured by the grace of the work, that's the idol, took him now for a god, which a little before was but just honored. So just honored as a man, not a god. So we see over the course of time, and it lines up with Daniel too, how the mere mortal kings began to build this image of a man as God. So this passage absolutely lines up with that. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. It was? Who knew? Well, certainly not the so-called saints of the world. They just want to get off planet Earth. And this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stalks the incommunicable name, which we know as Yahweh. Don't, don't say it. You know, they, it's too holy to even say his holy name. And it is he they stick on this. So, verse 22, Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God, who God was. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues which break in upon Israel, which was utter worship, which is what this is all telling us, Man, which was little before was honored as nothing more than a man, has now become a god who created all those stars out there and put them in their place. But it was serving. It was a self-serving purpose for men to make God he for the calamity and tyranny that you see playing out in this world. Um, did ascribe unto stones and stocks. So moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God and who God was, 
But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called peace. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Where does that passage take us to? We discovered when we actually chose to study and divide the word of God into the two covenants that is shown to us. That's dividing the Red Sea, and it's the presence of God that does that. Yeah. And she was called God on earth. That's what the Old Testament tells us when we actually determine to study it and not listen to a man off the pulpit. So, for whilst they, so what does it say in Jeremiah? Jeremiah 9. I didn't bring my Bible. But it says, peace, peace to the daughters. They say it to the daughters. And also in Ezekiel 13, peace when there is no peace. Right? And one, lo, one built up a wall. And that takes us, this wall here that Adam actually daubs a lie in. And that's the curse of the harlot spirit, right? That we see in Zechariah 5 going over the earth. Now we'll take a look at that again in a minute. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or festivals or made revelings of strange rites, yeah, which we're told eventually became law, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. That's what this current marriage covenant is. It's total defilement unto the woman. But either one slew another traitorously, and they did, or grieved her by adultery. So what is another term for idolatry? Idolatry is the same as I idolatry, which is why the marriages are n are now being defiled. They're not undefiled marriages. These are defiled. They could tell the woman anything and she'll jump through his hoop and do it. <laughs> she'll play as harlot. And that's why the marriage covenant is now defiled, completely defiled. So that there reigned in all men without exception, without exception. It states, off his tongue was words like oil. Smooth as oil, but in his heart was drawn swords, and it's no different today. It says, without exception, so that there reigned in all men, without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, and perjury. So we're going to define perjury, and we. I think I also went in to define dissimulation, but now I can't remember what it was. Uh, what was it? False oath takers. Um, so disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of soul, changing of kind, disorder in marriages, idolatry, which is the same as idolatry is what it comes down to, and shameless, uncleanness. I, I, I find this is so true when they'll say the five wise virgins. You know, they will go into the bridegroom. What usually happens when a virgin goes into her bridegroom? Well, she becomes defiled, don't she? And here, they can't even blush over the fact that there's five that goes in. He wasn't to have five. <laughs> and we know they throw the word virgin in there, so your mind goes straight to sexuality. That's what it's all about. So you've got defilement all the way around, and it's so inbred into the mind. It's so right into the blood that they don't even see the wickedness and the sickness and the sexual defilement when they say five virgins for one man. It's really sick and twisted. It's sick that those five is fine with it, and it's sick that that's what he wants. You're sick and you're twisted in your thinking, and you can't even come away from it. So, and shameless uncleanness which they don't know enough to be ashamed about. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. There you go. Look at the world we're looking at. Look at the world we're looking at. It has almost come to the full, at least to my way of wickedness. But I guess when you get thinking and watching some of the real horrible things that they portray in shows that you think to yourself, could it become that wicked before it comes to the full? And God says in Jeremiah 23, had you actually been prophesying the truth of my words that I spoke to you, you would have led them out of all their evilness. Well, 
if this is the truth that leads us out of all evilness, then why is the world coming to the fall? It should not have come to the fall. So let's look at perjury. Okay. Let me see if I can find my information here. Yeah, define. Yeah, define perjury. The offense of willfully telling an untruth in a court after having taken an oath or affirmation. So you know what the oath we're looking at that got broke? Was that he took the righteous spirit's oath for his own, and then he went in and he told a lie and blasphemed against her. Now that's what we've discovered in a nutshell. So where does that actually lead us to in our thinking? Well, it took me to Zechariah 5. So the flying scroll, scroll here is simply the symbol of the covenant that came to rule in the land. And it's actually identified as the oath that he agreed to. And then it gets described in the next passage as truly what it is that's this oath that he's in covenant with. <laughs> so the man that's in oath to this covenant, we identified as Baal. B-A-A-L, the idol standing in the land as God, which is the reason why everything has come is coming to the full. Idol worship. And uh, they've all fallen into the ditch, the blind leading the blind. Um, they can't deliver themselves, it says. Um, <clears throat> they even fell into it, it says, the snare that they lay for us. So then I turned and I lifted up mine eyes, Zechariah 5, verse 1, and looked, and behold, a flying scroll, or a roll. And she said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Now I think this is also identifying the house for her. The future com that comes into view here later on as the basket that they go to find a land to set her house in. So I think it's identifying the size of that temple, I think. Then said she unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth under his man-made religious lie shall be cut off as on this side, according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side, according to it. So we're looking at two sides here. Now we're told... The principality and the power of the air that rules is the harlot spirit. That has that side of it to do with. The spirit that rules in the second heaven, in the heart of man, <clears throat> is your would-be identification, which is a harlot spirit. Ruling on that side will be cut off, and those on this side swearing the men in to that covenant, because the women represents the spirit, right? <clears throat> will be cut off according to it on this side. So let's go in verse 3 and look at that word curse or sweareth and what it really means. Okay, interlinear, <coughs> excuse me. Didn't say curse, it says oath. Strong's Hebrew 423. Feminine. An oath. Go down. An oath. Oh, no, went down too far. Sorry. It's not working very fast. Um curse, cursing, execration, execration, oath, swearing. An imprecation from Allah, curse, cursing, execration, oath, a swearing. Okay, so this is the oath, which is a curse that goeth forth over the face of the earth. And the swearing here, is it the same word? Okay, so we don't. So that's okay. And a thief in the scroll, according, shall be expelled to be emptied. 
be desolate. So they're, they're going to be cut off. Yet more are the children of the desolate than of she who has a husband. So she who has a husband is identified actually in this passage. Because this is the oath that they're swearing by. Um, so perjurer. To swear, adjure, sworn. To swear, take an oath to. So he becomes the perjurer because he perjures himself in the courts of heaven. When he accuses her of being a harlot. And so by then, he begins to turn everything upside down and told, tells the part, because he wins his case because of the accusation, because she's got nothing to say. She goes silent. And we see that when he accused the woman in the garden, her, she literally went silent. She, she staggered. She couldn't believe that he had accused her after he had promised to uphold her covenant in the land. And so we get, and she'll be expelled made empty or to be remade pure um, for those who receive the truth. So let's go back into Zechariah 5 and we'll further follow up. The curse that's identified. So it's identified as this woman in a basket. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And she said, This is a Nephi. That means a basket. That goeth forth. She said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. So they're 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 laying the lead on top of the basket cover to lock it in, is your idea. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And she said, This is wickedness. And she cast it into the midst of the ephah, and she cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. So she they she gets locked in place. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and heaven. And then said I to the angel that talked with me, whether do these bear the ephah? This is important. Because this is where they set up her house as a harlot. And she said unto me, to build it a house in the land of Babylonia. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base. So who are they in covenant with? To steal on this side and to swear falsely on this side. It is with the harlot spirit that is the curse of the earth that goeth forth over the whole world. So what did we identify as the wife of the covenant? In Isaiah 54, 1, well, her name is Baal, same as his name. And that's an identification of a woman that will bow to a man's maid's religious lie and laws, which is identifying the spirit on that side, which is the principality and power of the world that governs us right now, which is found in the spirit realm. Now, we find the harlot being exalted to the true principle of the host, to the true commander of the host. And we find her, her host being taken away from her and her actually being cast down into the earth. And we find the glory of Israel, of Jerusalem, being cast down into the earth as a literal feminine, female. And he stamps upon the stars that gets cast down to the earth. That means they get put under him as this harlot spirit when he exalted this one that would play the harlot spirit into the spiritual realm, which is in here, identified as in here. So we find that in Lamentations to the glory of Israel being cast down. Now we find that. And they find her in, we found her, it says, it says it, as it was in the land of Eph Ephrata. Um, and we looked at that briefly. So it was her that they found there, having been cast down. And as one of the, these stars of heaven that got stamped upon. And, and it absolutely is identified here. Um, uh, let's see if we can find this. Lo, this is Psalm 132.6. Lo, we have heard of it, the ark or the palace or habitation for the Lord last mentioned at Ephrata. That is at Shiloh in the tribe of Ephraim. There they were told it she had been. But she was gone. They found her at last in the fields of the woods. That would be 
what, Lebanon? That is in Kerjath Jerem, which signifies the city of woods, Lebanon. So this was her, I think, actually cast down, and they found her there. They found her. Um, because the host got handed over <clears throat> to the harlot spirit that man exalted in his heart, and the daily offering of thanks to her spirit, to the righteous spirit, to the principal, and her house was, became um, defiled and torn down, as we see. So Zachariah testifies to the curse that goes forth, which is women that bows to the idol of a man, Zach, uh, Daniel 2. Um, we saw them building on this. Okay. So, and I had mentioned that, um, she said, you will not give my name to another. And, you know, I think it is in this copy. And I'm going to go back through and I'm going to look for it. And I will write it under the video. I should have hit on it harder. Um, and I was reading through it. You know, and, and I think it comes down. She says, you take these images that man has carved with his own hand and you call them gods. And yet I made you. And you, you are more like a god because you can actually move around. You can hear, you can see, you can breathe, you can move. And I'm your creator. And then you say, he's the potter. You know, you give my name to another, that title of God. Actually, to this idol that you created for yourself. Now, I didn't do a very good job on that. And I, I, uh, I did find it. And it's got to have been here. Because, but what? I, do, I think it was here. Unless it's in another rendering. So, let's look at the cathars. I'm sorry about that. So this is what I wanted to say about Cathars. When you do actually literally find this truth, and I found it through the Holy Spirit and going to wisdom, I did. Um, I didn't know this stuff. Now, I ha I've had this printed off for a while. So I may have read through it, I probably did, and forgot that I knew this stuff. Um, and you do that over time. You come in contact with so, so much information. And at the time, you don't realize what you're looking at. You don't realize that you know what you know, or in time will know what you know. And so you kind of end up looping back around to that information and going, ah, I get it now. And I can do that with a book when I read it. I can do it with a TV show when I watch it. And I think I've picked up little, um, little indicators. And when I go back around, I'll pick up even more and more and more to the point that it's like, ah, now I get it. Um, so it, you know, learning is a process. Um, faith in the truth is a process. Um, it begins with picking yourself up from a religious lie, an idol that will not save you. And you're going to allow this idol to totally decimate you in the process because you have too much pride to even begin to hear the truth. You're so sure that you have the truth. And yet over and over, when you determine to open your eyes, to listen with your ears and to hear and go search for that truth, that it's going to be validated by wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is going to validate it. So now this is Cathars. And I had this printed off probably, I don't know, probably since 2014, 2015. Um, maybe, I don't know, somewhere in there, I assume. And it's called The Secrets of the Cathars. And I'm only going to read two little paragraphs out of it. If I can find the link to it, I'll post it. And it was written by a man named William Henry. And it was originally published in Atlantis Rising, December 2002. Um, so, and it's, the, it's why the Dark Age Church what, was out to destroy them. And it's called The Secret of the Cathars. So, so this is what I have discovered. Now, at the time, I didn't know this. I, I'm pretty sure if I read it, I would not have known it. So now I know it. And reading through it, I can make my notes. And completely understand much of it. As for the false information that they want to put out there, it you know it's told that one of the um, oh um, I forget the word now, but one of the the kind of rules of heaven is that they have the liars down here have to tell the truth, 
But the thing is, in amongst all, you know, all the lies, they can embed that truth. But they can tell all the lies they want, but somewhere in there they got to tell you the truth. So, I mean, that's a constant way that they keep you in idol worship. That's one of the avenues that they will use to keep you down at the feet of an idol. Um, because they make it very difficult for you to find the truth. And I think it's made difficult intentionally. It's a test by the spirit to test just your willingness and how much you actually long to know the truth. And that's going to be determined by how well you persevere and are willing to continue to struggle and weed out the lies and find that little thread of truth, that book of truth, that little book sealed up. So the Cathars called themselves pure ones. Oh, we never heard that term in the Bible before, have we? After the goddess known as the pure one. Where do we find the term pure one? We know, don't we, on this channel? She's found right in Song of Songs. Song of Songs 6-9. 6. Nine. Six nine. Let's do that. Oh, it's pulling this up. Oh, come on. Well, I'll get there. Today, maybe. Okay, parallel. What does it say? And it says pure ones. It says pure one. Come on. Okay, so let's scroll down here. To the king. My dove. There's my dove. We find her in Psalm 68 as the Lord burnt ashes. Dove. That's feminine. Yep. Pigeon is the masculine. Dove is always going to be your feminine. Um, we find her as an ash heap. She's burned to an ash heap in Psalm 68, surrounded by her congregation of women. That's right. Who met on the North Mountain, identified as a house in the forest of Lebanon or the uh the place of wood uh what 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 was it i just said um anyway my dove my undefiled is but one she is the only one of her mother she is the choice one or the pure one it'll say of her that bear her the daughter saw her blessed her yea the queens praised her now they stick concubines no such thing as concubines um let me see Choice one, pure child. We get pure child. We get pure child. Um, so it's the pure one. Let's see if we can go back up here. Choice. She is the pure one. Let me see. So let's do this. Parallel chapters. And we will scroll down to verse 9. She is the only daughter of her mother. She's the favorite one of her who bore her. She's the pure one, the pure child. So we get the pure, My and you go in and it'll say the pure one, okay? So the Cathars called themselves pure ones after the goddess known as the pure one. Their term for the virgin great creator mother, Mary, and it's it's ironic that Mary is M-A-R-I, which some spellings will put for Mara, bitterness, meaning they've got love. So, um, and I didn't highlight it, but it says that they believed in a book of love. All right. You can even type that in and ask. Um, what did they believe in? And um, they'll put a whole bunch of stuff up. But in through that, they will tell you that they did so believe in this sacred book called the Book of Love. And the only thing I could think of was, of course, Song of Songs. And it absolutely lines up with everything else that they believed. So this term, pure one, is found in Song of Songs, uh, which is also the same as their Book of Love. So they claimed, um, yeah, there it is. There it is in the, so they claim to possess a secret book of love, 
<laughs> um, yeah, they attribute it to Jesus. No, that's I think that's a lie. That's a mock that they threw in. They knew it wasn't from Jesus. They knew it came from wisdom, um, who was in actual existence, which we find cast down. Um, now I don't remember the passage that I found that in. Um, in in Ephrata, there we found her. So, um, and and that was in Lamentations too, is to find who they found her, cast down, which was the divine righteous principle who got cast down into the earth for the harlot spirit, and her host gets handed over to that harlot spirit is willingly teaching them man-made religious lies and law and an idol and teaching women how to bow. So she becomes stamped upon as the stars that gets ca cast down to the earth. So they, But the Cathars believed in a book of love. The existence of the existence, and we'll just read this one paragraph here, the existence of this lost or hidden gospel was revealed when the Catholic Church subjected the Cathars and the Templars in 1308 to torture. So I'm going to preface this a little bit. Now, the Templars were said to have been actually created by the Catholic Church themselves and served them up until it seems that the Templars came in contact with these Cathars. Once, a, once they came in contact with the Cathars, the Templars, Everything changes for the for the Templars. Now I gotta believe that what changed for them is they found the truth. The Cathars taught these Templars the truth. And the Templars being as powerful and as rich as they were was the one organization that could have maybe come against the Roman Catholic Church and took them on. They were that that rich and had that had shored up that much power. So it's interesting that suddenly, out of the blue, the Catholic Church orders a decree. They keep these, these orders hid. The, all the, the kingdoms where the Templars are found are instructed not to order, open them until this exact time. And before that, they could not open them so that they were opened all at exactly the same time. And then they slaughtered all these Templars, which they said had now become heretics right after coming in contact with the Cathars. Now, I find that quite fascinating, but you do got to use sense and reasoning to come to those particular thoughts. So its contents were a secret skill, right? Symbolized by the Templar's skull, by your skull, oh my, <laughs> what's in your skull? <laughs> so it was symbolized by the, a secret skill that was symbolized by the Templar skull, said to grant one the ability to control the forces of nature and to transform ordinary human blood into that of the wise, holy, and pure blood of life of the immortal or the illuminati, the illuminated ones, the enlightened ones. It is equated with the Holy Grail. So you know what it just told you your Holy Grail was? Wisdom. That's your Holy Grail. That's what it just told you. And the Cathars knew that. You know what else they believed? You can find it. Is that it? We'll scroll down because they throw so much foolishness in with, with what they supposedly believe. Cathars recognized the feminine principle in the divine and believed that God was both male and female. The female aspects of God was Sophia, wisdom. This belief encouraged equality equality of the sexes in Cathar communities. You want to know why these idol worshippers fight against wisdom? Because they do not want equality. They want all this wickedness that has come into this earth that is destroying you, telling you you have the truth. Well, the truth should preserve and keep us. Not lead to our ultimate demise, which is where these, these idol worshippers, what is it? Let's read it. They were allured by the grace in the work. Um, took him now for a god, which a little before was nothing more than just a man. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. For men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks this incommunicable name. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, were in war. Yeah. Those so great plagues 
called they peace. And the plague broke in upon them. They broke it broke in upon the Israelites in the Exodus. And you know what that plague's identified? Baal worship. You know what Baal is? Another name for your husband. Husband worship. Yeah. Bridegroom worship. Five were wise. Yeah, that's called polygamy. God never supported that one. Wisdom would tell you that, but you don't want to listen to her. Um, so for wives, they slew their children and sacrificed their use secret ceremonies, which are, have now come right out into the open. Or made revelings of strange rites. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Um, it says this is the covenant to be disannulled. It says with the womb of Sheol are we at agreement. And the womb of Sheol that their agreement, her name is Baal in Isaiah 54, 1. The wife of the, this covenant that agrees to bow to this religious lie and idol of man is God. The Shulamite says, look not upon me because I'm black. My mother's sons were angry with me. <laughs> yeah, because he didn't want to believe that the law of heaven come off her tongue, his wife's tongue. No, no, he had too much pride. So instead he chooses to accuse her. He accused her in the courts of heaven. He actually chose to perjure himself in the oath that he agreed to uphold and began to uphold the harlot spirit and actually helped to exalt her to that throne and removed the true righteous principle of wisdom from her throne, cast her down into the earth, and we see them stamping upon the stars. Yeah. And yet more are the children of the desolate spirit than if she has a husband. Yeah. So, um... So that there reign, there, that there reigned in all men. Okay, so yeah, and strange rites. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled, but either one slew another traitorously or grieved her by adultery. So that there reigned in all men without exception blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation. Let's look that up. Dissimulation. I, can't, I had it wrote down. I can't remember what it means. Uh, yeah, I've got strongs. <laughs> I don't want to. Define dissimulation. Um, concealment of one's thoughts. Yeah. So that, that yeah, concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character. Pretense. <laughs> The heart is deceitfully wicked, who can know it? And what does it say? It says, words on his tongue was just smooth as oil, but drawn swords was in his heart. And they are. They hate womankind. This, this is what this is all about. This is what this warring is all about. This is what man's pride. Oh, no, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Oh, the five virgins is there too. Don't worry. <laughs> That's a harlot. That's a harlot. It's sick to even think about. It. It's sick and twisted. And yet you try to present this as godliness? Oh my goodness. And you point at people like me? You know what they say when you're pointing your finger? There's three pointing right back at you. Reason. That, that's this unique secret skill that was symbolized by the Templar skull. That it been, that granted one the ability to control the forces of nature and to transform ordinary human blood into that of the wise. Yeah. To be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get out of idol worship. This, this, this religious lie spits on womankind. If you can't see it, it's because you choose to not to see it, to be blind. And you want to play his harlot. You want to. There's a want there to do it. Um, and it's a real sick desire. Um, so. Dissimulation. So that there reigned in all men without exception. Blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation. Corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, and perjury. Disquieting of good men. Forgetfulness of good turns. Defiling of souls. Changing of kind, disorder in marriage, adultery, and shameless, uncleanness. Oh boy, do we have that shamelessness um, or uncleanness, lack of shamelessness. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning of the cause and the end of all evil. You know why it's the end of all evil? Because it brings down your utter... Um, 
your utter rem your removal out of the land. You'll not be here anymore. Um, sorry, I can't seem to find my words like I want to. Um, so there we have it. We know what the Cathars believed. It also states that they believed in transmigration, I believe, uh, or reincarnation, which I think, I guess maybe there's a slight difference. But again, it, and I believe it, it is about the transmigration of the soul. Um, you will have a new body, but your spirit has to be cleansed. And it cannot be found to be an idol worship. And idol worship is bowed down at the feet of a man telling you, oh, Jesus is coming to get you out of a world that you created. And it, it tells you that idol worship creates evilness to the point that it'll wipe you out. It'll take you right out. They don't want to listen to wisdom. They're, they're too arrogant. They're too vulgar. They're too deceitful at heart to even recognize it, it says. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Well, you're only going to know it through the skill of wisdom. And they denied her in the days of their youth. This is why they wanted the Cathars wiped out. They had the truth. And, and this was it. The Cathars were in touch with, you know what they were in touch with? Study. <laughs> through the spirit of wisdom. And not this ridiculous lie that they call peace, which which is is twisted. It's twisted. It's so sick and twisted. Anyway, um, there's the video. Hope you watch it. Most are shutting down my videos. Maybe I've talked too long. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm probably going to start to space my videos a bit longer. Um, you know, people's going to ramble on. They're going to point. They're going to accuse. Um, they're going to try to dismiss everything I say. It doesn't matter because um, God the Creator gets the final say in it all, not them. They want to stay in the womb of Sheol and die and be obliterated. That's fine. Their soul. Spirit, you will be obliterated. Um, I've done some study on uh, a bodiless, on bodiless spirits. Um, it's pretty grim. It's pretty dark um, how that world is portrayed. To be bodiless, to have no no spirit, and to have no body, and um, you're the one that has to cleanse that the way that you look at things, to be re transformed by the renewing of your mind, and it's wisdom that does that. Wisdom teaches you to reason. Wisdom teaches you knowledge. Wisdom teaches you fear of the truth too. Um, you know, it's frightful to fall into the hands of a living God. You don't want to do that. And yet they'll teach that that's a male, male, male. And the harlots in the world don't get how that's a defiling thought. That's what got the Cathars wiped out of existence, what got the Templars. And there's some that says the Templars, or the Templars, I'm not saying it right, went underground, that they still exist. Um, and that they're still there. Um, so I, I tend to think that there is truth around it because I discovered this truth in the scriptures without knowing any of this prior. It was the Holy Spirit that woke me up to those truths because in my spirit I was crying out, why did you even bother making me if all woman is is to be treated as trash at man's feet, to use with at his disposal. Oh, and he can play the sweet little thing. But in his heart is drawn swords. Watch them. Their idol is Jesus. Their idol is Father. They glorify Father. They glorify Jesus. But mother and daughter screw you. And if you don't get that that's what all their speech is about. And how wicked it truly is in here. Though it's oil coming off the tongue. Just like it is off the harlot. It's like, oh, butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. She speaks so sweetly, but it takes real wisdom to get through, to cut through the lies and to cut through the bullcrapper's bullcrap. You will never have peace. You will never have peace under an idol of a man. Never. So you can call it wickedness. It doesn't matter. God gets the final say, not man telling his lies. So thanks for watching. Perhaps I say things that is too hard to hear. 
It is only for the chosen that wants to stand up from the feet of the idol and pursue the truth. That's why they're called mother's preserved ones. That's why they're called wisdom's preserved ones, her strong ones. You're strong. You're identified as a she-goat willing to climb to that mountain of truth um, and to um, thresh it. You thresh that mountain down to chaff. That's identified in Zechariah 4. That's what happens when we hit on the truth and we continue to pursue it. And we don't always want to. We get tired. Um, but there does come a time when wisdom stops calling. Um, to speak, to speak for the truth means to trumpet it. Uh, we find that allegory, of course, in the Old Testament. You know, the things that you didn't know um, and how easy it can be manipulated. It, it's, it's amazing when you choose not to study, when you choose not to go in and divide the word of truth. Um, but to go and to speak for the Lord means that you are speaking a message. And, um, you know, and wisdom says, when I, I called and you couldn't be bothered to answer, then I'm going to leave. I'm going to appoint my sovereign. She will be the firstborn daughter. We find that in Psalm 2. Um, and she comes as a rod of, um, what is it? A rod of anger. Uh, I can't remember the word to term. I ain't got my Bible in front of me. Um, because so many things are going on in my mind lately all the time. And I, I do get tired. I wish I, you can never kind of shut your mind down the way you want to just shut down and relax. There's always thoughts going around and around and around. And yeah, some days my words are in better order than in others. Today's not so much. Um, but, um, anyway, I, I guess I have to be done speaking. Um, but wisdom says there'll come a time when I will no longer be calling for you. I'll let you have your wicked ways and you can wipe yourselves out. Eliminate yourself through all your foolishness that you want and believe in. Um, when I tell you to reason the truth out and you can't be bothered, then, hey, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I do pray the Lord blesses you with an abundance of truth, and I hope you all have a lovely day.